Hi, welcome to our TNT for Thursday. We've got a, a new executive producer on TNT. Now, this is Daisy joining Dusty and Dina, and uh, they're not too happy about the situation, but Daisy certainly is. Wandered into the yard on Saturday, decided uh, as she got up on the couch, and this is where she was going to stay. So we've been up to the VET, and uh, we're teaching her how to walk on a leash. She's very happy to be here, and we're very happy to have her uh, as well. So uh, welcome to Daisy. So acknowledging our sponsor, Five Star Marine at fivestarmarinepuket.com. Just a quick uh, comment from a viewer yesterday from someone who calls themselves Thomas Dooley. He says, please, Tim, would it be possible for you to pronounce Samui correctly? Here on the island, we say Samui, not Samui. So can't say I've ever heard it uh, pronounced the way you've sort of written it. Maybe you need to record it and send it to me in an email. Uh, I do try and pronounce things as best I can. Uh, as I've said over the years, there seems to be about 19 ways to say papaya, but everybody seems to have their own pronunciation. The main thing is, as I said to Thomas, is that you understand what I'm talking about. And usually there are some words in front of you so you can figure it out if I get it all wrong. But uh, thank you very much, Thomas, for, uh, for your deliberations. As we just go to this story very quickly, uh, published here in Yahoo Finance, but originally in Reuters, Thai Central Bank holds key rate, defies government calls for cuts, and Thailand's central bank left its key interest rate unchanged for a third straight meeting yesterday, resisting repeated calls by the government to lower borrowing costs to help revive Southeast Asia's second largest economy. And the committee voted 5 to 2 to hold the one-day repurchase rate at 2.5%, the highest in more than a decade, and it raised the rate by 200 basis points since August 2022 to curb inflation. And that decision came moments after the government secured funding for its signature 13.8 billion baht handout scheme, which it said would help boost growth to 5% next year. And the Prime Minister's repeatedly urged the central bank to cut rates, saying the current level is hurting businesses and investor sentiment and that the economy is in crisis. So the Prime Minister has over the past couple of months been partly blaming the Bank of Thailand for this current crisis. But as the article says, he has secured funding for that uh, digital wallet handout. Let's check Cowshot English on their Facebook page, and uh, the Prime Minister led a press conference yesterday to say that the digital wallet handout scheme would go ahead and can be used by the fourth quarter of 2024. That's going to be a 10,000 baht uh, digital wallet, and about 50 million people will benefit from the scheme, but that's not including foreigners and those eligible must be over 16 years of age, earn no more than 840,000 baht per annum, and is no more than 500,000 baht deposited in a bank. And they're going to get the money from three sources this year and next year's annual budgets and borrowings from the Bank of Agriculture and Cooperative. The registration will be done in the third quarter this year, and the scheme's expected to increase next year's GDP growth by 1.2 to 1.6%. And then number five, usurers, I would have thought users would have sufficed, can only buy from small shops in their district, and that includes convenience stores, including those at petrol stations, but not at supermarkets, shopping malls, online purchases, petrol, or anything related to gambling. So the Per Thai government saying, well, yeah, they are going to uh, go ahead with the 10,000 baht digital wallet handout, but it is uh, quite specific. It was a key platform announcement during the election campaign last year, so Pertai very keen to uh, get it completed. Now, to the ongoing spat on the border of Thailand and Myanmar, and this from kausotenglish.com, Thai Air Force deploys F-16 jets to protect Mae Sot airspace. And the Royal Thai Air Force dispatched two F-16 fighter jets to patrol over Mae Sot district in the Tuk province for more than 30 minutes yesterday. 
And this happened after Thai villagers heard sounds of fighting in Miawadi, this is uh, in Myanmar, between the Karen National Union, the Karen National Liberation Army, and the People's Defence Force, and one of Burma's army battalions. Uh, local sources reported on April the 10th that the attack by the anti-junta groups on the military camp caused fires in several areas around the site. But the resistance forces were met with retaliatory fire from MiG-29 fighter jets, which dropped bombs that caused loud explosions that could be heard throughout the Thai Myanmar border area. Most villagers walked across the Thai Myanmar Friendship Bridge to the permanent border crossing in Mae Sot, causing traffic congestion on the Thai side and filling the area with large numbers of Miawadi residents queuing to apply for temporary border passes to legally enter Thailand. Now, of course, this doesn't include the probably thousands of people to the north and to the south of this crossing who just walk across the paddock and suddenly they've gone from Myanmar into Thailand. And just for some more information, we go to Irrawaddy.com and their headline there, Myanmar war refugees race across Friendship Bridge to safety in Thailand. And just a few other headlines in Irrawaddy.com, resistance drones strike Myanmar military southeast command and Myanmar junta fast tracks conscription law implementation. Myanmar junta slams UN criticism of human rights record. At least 13 political prisoners died in early 2024. Current ethnic army launches final push to capture Miawadi on Thai border. Gang rape victims among 179 Rakhine civilians killed by Myanmar junta in four months. And just to give you a bit of context where this is happening at the moment, there you can see Mae Sot on the right. That's in Thailand. You can see the wobbly border there. And uh, Miawadi on the left, which is in Myanmar. And there you can see Bangkok down the bottom. And then in Western Thailand, you've got uh, Mae Sot and the Miawadi uh, border. If you really want to keep up to date with what's happening in Myanmar, I can recommend Irrawaddy.com. Uh, it does have its own biases, but certainly the most uh, specific and detailed coverage of this uh, current conflict. It's our Thursday TNT. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Got some vaping stories now, seems to be filling the news. BangkokPost.com reporting thousands of vape pens seized near schools. And about 12,000 e-cigarettes, valued around 3.6 million baht, have been seized during raids on five shops near schools in Bangkok. And officials searched three shops in Soi Ratchada Pisek in Chattuchak district, Soi Lap Prao and Soi Ram Kamang. 20 bags containing more than 12,000 e-cigarettes in total were seized. And the e-cigarette products sold near the schools were packaged to appear like snacks, ordinary pens or even small milk cartons to increase their appeal to young people. And we also had this story, this in Phuket-go.com, Thai authorities to charge passenger who vaped on a plane. And a woman who was filmed vaping while on a plane will be charged, according to Chiang Rai Airport authorities. And the passenger has been identified after video footage of her smoking an e-cigarette was shared on social media. The footage of the woman vaping on a flight taking off from Chiang Rai on Sunday was posted on the Red Skull X account. And the person who shared the footage questioned how the passenger was able to bring the vape onto the aircraft. This is shameful. I don't know how she was able to go through the airport security checkpoint. And the director at the Chiang Rai airport said that while the security checks are thorough, a vape can be missed as the mouthpieces are made from plastic, which isn't detectable by x-ray. You're not meant to vape on planes. You're not meant to vape in Thailand. I know a lot of people do. But uh, obviously these people not particularly discreet. Either were these two brothers. And from Patia One News, big fine for smoking on Finnair flight into Bangkok. And two men from Estonia were apprehended and fined at Sawanapum for smoking on board a flight despite repeated warnings from the cabin crew that such actions were against the law. How many repeated warnings? Upon landing in Bangkok, the crew of the Finnair flight promptly reported to Suwanapum Airport officials the two siblings had indulged in smoking inside the aircraft restroom during the journey. And despite being instructed to cease their actions, they persisted in smoking on five separate occasions. Consequently, they were each issued fines amounting to 20,000 baht. 
well, disrespectful and stupid. I don't know, works out around a few thousand baht per puff. Uh, now, in the vein of foreigners being stupid here in Thailand, let's go to this one. And this from dailymail.co.uk, been widely reported around Thailand as well. A Brit is arrested for stripping naked in front of other tourists as they posed for a group photo in Thailand. And you may have thought they were horrified, but apparently not. Joseph William Kershaw, 23, was caught on camera by a resident of Krabi as he strolled on Ao Nang Beach. Images show a gathering of around 20 to 30 young foreigners on the Paradise Beach, all cheering as Kershaw waved his genitals around, taking no notice of the horrified locals and passing motorists. I'm not really seeing too much of waving his genitals around. Oh my, oh no, nobody wants to see that. Please stand up. But while his pals may have found the nude display entertaining, locals were not impressed, claiming his behaviour disrespected the landmark sculpture don't think the sailfish cared, and the Krabi community. Following multiple complaints from locals and after seeing the footage, Krabi Immigration Police and the Aonang Police Station managed to identify Kershaw and found that he was in Thailand on a tourist visa. He admitted to being the man in the video, claimed he stripped due to being intoxicated and overexcited. He said, I'm ashamed, I'm very sorry to all the people, I was very drunk, I appreciate it. it's not acceptable in your culture, I don't really think it's acceptable anywhere, and it won't happen again, I'm very sorry, and I'm thankful to you all for being helpful and very kind, and I apologise, I'll never do that again. And police uh, said yesterday that Kershaw had been fined 5,000 baht for the behaviour. Well, it could have been worse. He could have been vaping whilst he was running around naked. Uh, anyway, 5,000 baht for a few moments of fun and probably a video that's now going to go around the world. Uh, just finishing with another comment from a viewer today. And TM Adventures T7 sent this in. Worked out of Yangon for several years. Only last week we were finally advised by our company that it's far too dangerous to travel. Myanmar is desperately seeking guidance during the civil war. The atrocities that are going on out there is beyond words. And look, there are some stories that I've seen that I would like to report, but because of YouTube, because of your sensibilities, I've decided not to. But to be sure, there is a horrific situation in Myanmar at the moment. I've got a couple of Burmese people around here, uh, one that works for me, and I'm hearing almost constant updates of uh, the intricacies and the details of personal situations, personal stories of horrific situations in Myanmar at the moment. I think uh, the situation's getting to a point where it's going to rise to some sort of crescendo soon. But as I've said, uh, even worse than the Burmese military running the country would be the alternative, and that is this uh, sort of band of various gangs, uh, lawless gangs uh, up in the northwest, who would be running the country. I I'm not really sure what's going to happen to Myanmar in the short, medium or long term, but we just hope that uh, the people are keeping as safe as possible. And certainly Thailand is going to have to shoulder the burden of more refugees and also some responsibility and should be taking part in trying to resolve uh, the situation and bring peace back to, to Myanmar. And with that, I thank you for watching. Hopefully you're a bit more up to date with the things happening around Thailand. We're going all the way through the, the Songkran period. So tomorrow, Saturday, Saturday is Songkran Day. And uh, I imagine probably tomorrow in a few of the party areas, I believe somebody said in Soy 6 up in Pattaya, there was uh, some water splashing even yesterday. So it looks like it's going to get started uh, early. Uh, it runs for two or three days officially. Uh, in some of the quieter spots out in the villages, it will only be on April the 13th. But uh, I'll be going out today and getting my super soaker and having some fun with the kids, hopefully on Saturday. But uh, from me to you, have a great Thursday, and we look forward to seeing you next time.